Hey, welcome to another episode of Daily Refinement. Today I'm going to be doing store reviews for you guys. I apologize for the long delay. I've been a little bit behind on running my store, but let's get straight into it. The first store is Greg's Gigs 1994. What's up, Greg? He had reached out to me and, say, and said that he needs to build a store that can support two full-time people. So uh, before we get straight into the store review, I'm going to give you guys an idea of what I think it takes um, to run a you know essentially six figure store i'm hoping that the two of you can at least net uh ten thousand dollars per month that's five thousand per week and at least a thousand dollars per week and that you can get by until you decide what you want to do with your store so i'm going to give you guys a very clear example of what that looks like if in in the, my mastermind group i basically preach that you want to have three categories that can net one hundred dollars per day as an example you can have a 10% sell through rate per month and $20 profit per item. That means if you sell five items a day at $20 profit in that category, then you're gonna make a hundred bucks. But what most people don't talk about is how many items do you need in order to do that? And if you have a 10% sell through in your category, which is very normal for, let's say the category of used shoes, you would need 1500 shoes in stock in order to sell 150 per month at a 10% sell through rate, which is a very solid sell through rate for used shoes. And then you'd be at the um, $100 a day with just the shoe category. Now, I do think the 10% is a little bit of a slow sell through rate, but that's okay because it depends on the category. And used shoes, you're competing with new shoes, you know that are priced really cheap to move and you're competing against companies like adidas.com who compete with their sellers directly. So hopefully that's useful. Just shoes to make six figures in my opinion, you would need 4,500 pairs of shoes in stock. Um, and that would be, you'd be selling 450 per month, which sounds kind of crazy, but it's actually not that many. That would mean between the two people, you would have to do 15 pairs a day on average, listed and sold and sourced. 100% doable for two people. You would just need to have the space to do that. Now, that being said, let's get straight into your store. Um, you have 665 results. My guess from looking at this is you have probably about a 4% sell through rate. Of course, it doesn't count multiple, so at least 4%, <clears throat> 84 sold in the last 90 days. And your feedback would indicate that you're selling, you know, 30-ish items per month, which is about right with 16 feedback, maybe a little bit more. Um, this looks like a drop shipping store. I'm not sure exactly um, where you're getting your items from, but they're all stock photos. And I have a few opinions on this, which I'm gonna share with you guys. Um, but let's get to start with the titles. The titles are great. Um, I do think that perhaps shorter is better. But that being said, um, I've tried a few of your listings directly in the Google. And the main concern that I have is that there are a lot of other retailers selling the same items for a few dollars less, $20 less, $30 less, which makes it look like a drop shipping store. Most uh, buyers are savvy at this point and they're shopping on multiple platforms. Uh, that being said, you one way to stand out from all the other drop shippers that are doing this game is to use one real photo and i realize that that can be challenging but if you're running a small drop shipping store a couple thousand items you can really stand apart by having real photos inside your listing because when i look at this store it looks like you're drop shipping so you know i've been buying stuff on ebay and whenever i get the a box that's just from amazon it looks like i basically didn't do my homework and i got caught in that arbitrage and so what you want to do here is really try to stand apart and get items that are more in demand. Right now, the items you have in your store are not rare. They're not necessarily highly sought after. You're just 100% relying on the keyword optimization, and that makes it tough. You really want to stand out and try to sell something unique, something interesting. I have to shout out Prince, my boy, who's Wired by Biz on Instagram. If you look at his store, they're all unique items bundled unique I mean sorry common items bundled uniquely and that is the way that he is selling things that are common but in an uncommon way to reduce uh, competition and for you if you're only at four percent sell through rate you're gonna need tens of thousands of items to make six figures which is very challenging unless you guys are really using that software to dial in okay the next thing is your pricing check um, pricing is definitely accurate for drop shipping but not 
towards market. The stuff that you have in your store is probably about 10, 20% above market at least, and that's gonna make it a little bit tough. Um, in the shipping policy, obviously free shipping is great, but I think right now eBay is really pushing the free returns for 30 days. So I think we all need to adapt and build a little bit of a larger store, in my opinion, or higher profit store by just sourcing things that profit more in order to absorb that cost of free shipping because that's gonna become the name of the game. People want free returns. Free shipping, I like to make them earn that so they don't just get free shipping unless they do a combined order or they buy a full price. There's a reason why I want to get that um, give away that free shipping for you since you have no best offer. I think that's perfectly fine. Again, for the photography, you're using square photos, which takes up the full space, optimal uh, mobile experience. But again, these photos to me indicate that you do not have the item or your drop shipping or they're brand new. You could be the main person. Let's see here. Product mix. Um, my main issue is that there's nothing unique in this store. It's all just normal stuff that you could get from any retailer, which makes it tough again to stand out. But again, that's all right, especially if you can use other people's money, other people's time, other people's listings. I am a huge fan of leverage. So the fact that you're already using other people's inventory uh, gives me hope that you can definitely get to that full-time level. I hope that both of you have a part-time job because you're going to have to leave money into your in your store until it's much, much, much larger. Uh, I recommend at least $100,000 listed in your store for the amount that you have. Uh, so it's really important to check that um, in your active listing in Seller Hub to find out how much stuff you have listed because you can't make a hundred grand unless you have at least 200 grand in sales and 50% profit margin, which is very hard. That would mean you have to buy the stuff for basically $20 and sell for 100 in order to net half, right? It's more realistically, uh, trying to get 100 grand for two people is more like $300,000 in sales. So again, that's pretty stout. That's $25,000 a month. That's about where I am at, and it is very difficult. I have one full-time person, and I have locked down suppliers of stuff that already sells. So without those, without the consistent, um, for me, about 50 listings going up five days a week, that's 250 per week, um, at about $15 profit, that's what that looks like. So eventually it's going to catch up. But for you, process and supply is going to be huge. Okay, let's go to the next one. Also, if you guys buy a store review from me, you are welcome to uh, comment or uh, message me after the fact. I keep in touch with most people who bought a review from me. It's a, it's a few hundred people at this point, and it's mutually beneficial. I get to touch base with you and see how you're growing. And also, you know, of course, I'm not making that much money off of these reviews. It's more just um, a way for me to stay sharp. Okay, let's go to Magic Key Holders. Dan, what's going on? Great store, lots of feedback. Um, 146, so looking at you know 300 to 400 sales per month, strong. That's about 10 per day. Um, looking at your store right now, right off the bat, I can tell that um, with these photos, I really think that you should try to get as crispy of a white background as possible to make it pop because there is so much Disneyana out there. Um, the only thing I can suggest with your photos is just try to make them a little bit more poppy because they can just look a little bit dull to me for items that are collectible. It's almost like I want that pure white um, collectible type experience or just the flat color like flat blue or flat gray and the reason why i say that is because i've seen a lot of people who use scanners or tools to help streamline the photo process because for you a lot of your items are relatively cheap um, under the 45 dollar range you need speed speed is the king in order to get there you have a um let's see a 20 percent sell through rate i'm going to guess three to four hundred sold 2051 items you have a lot of auctions going which is great uh, auctions can definitely boost your ranking. However, I don't recommend auctions because so many people do not pay. So it's a little bit scary. I'd almost rather lower my prices week after week and have buy it now and require um, payment right away just because the auctions I'm finding at least 10, 15% of people are not paying. Um, so one thing I would recommend, Dan, is I've seen a lot of people be successful with auctions and what they're doing is they're having 10 day auctions or seven day auctions and they stack them. So for example, if they have them all ending at seven o'clock on a Sunday, they'll have another set of listings if it's seven day, start an hour before that 
listing ends. And so for a period of time, they will have both sets of auctions listed at the same time. And this is going to create a lot of combined shipping orders if you sell in the same category. So hopefully you can have overlapping auctions. I am going to be trying this even though I don't like auctions because I feel like the combined shipping discount is worth the people who do not pay. So there has to be some sort of advantage for me to try something like that. Your pricing looks on point because your sell-through rate is really high. Your photography is good. Um, I would overexpose them just a tiny bit on the first photo to get that crispy look and then have the rest of the photos be um, less, less contrasty. So let's see. Let's take a look. Yeah, again, I would make this first photo really crispy. And these photos are essentially the same, so I'm hoping that you're not spending too much time uploading the same photo. Unless you're trying to get that hack where it's like you have six or more photos so you rank higher. I, I actually like that. Uh, I don't mind if you're entering in the same photo over and over again just to get that boost in ranking. It would make sense that Cassini ranks you higher if you have more than one photo um, because it would indicate traditionally that you the photos rather than just using the stock photo from the manufacturer but again that's all you know p potentially old wives tales let's see here yeah i don't think there should be free shipping unless people earn it by buying more than one item or some kind of a discount you have a 25 percent off sale here which i do not like i do not like the 25 percent off sale because i feel like this plate could be worth a lot more it's almost like i'd want a 25 percent off your order today that's done in the promoted listings, I mean the um, promotions manager, and I like that a lot better because you can adjust it, pick the categories versus markdown manager is so time consuming. It basically sucked the life out of me and that's why they're phasing it out. So hopefully um, the sale event plus markdown manager is a little bit, it's not as effective to me because this 25% strike through is not really giving this plate its full value in my opinion. I'd rather it be you know, $99 marked down to a certain amount. And I can see here that you have to do a fixed amount. And see here you have a $10 sale and here you have a $12 sale. All of that extra time, I would try to save and try to streamline. That's why I only have basically one shipping policy right now, which is a flat $649. Uh, I would actually run four promotions. I would do a shipping discount. I would do an order discount. Do a bunch of different ones so people can try to stack and have fun and spend more time in your actual store. Especially since you have so much Disneyana. Um, you definitely want to get in there and have people increase their order in order to get the free shipping. Let's see. Product mix. Let me search from high to low and see if you have enough high expensive stuff in your store. I think you do. Yeah, you have a great mix. You've got some really, really rare limited collectible stuff. Um, again, Daniel is about to join my mastermind group this week. What I would recommend is let's really focus on getting the hundred bucks in three different categories. I don't know what they may be. They may be uh, figurines. They may be keychains. They may be license plates. They may be um, Funko Pops. Not sure, but let's get together, decide what those three topics are that you want to really hone in on because once you have that six figures coming in, then you can work on other projects and really start growing your collection uh, because you'll have the capital to reinvest in stuff that is more home runny that can take a little bit longer. Let's see your descriptions. Let's take a look at a random one. I think that they're great. And your descriptions are very clean. Um, I notice you have a lot of branding on your own website. Maybe put a little bit of branding in there. Um, as far as like something about you, I wouldn't say go too heavy on the graphics because that might be picked up by the active content um, machine. So just maybe just put in a little bit of about me in each title, uh, or each description rather. Um, I like you that you do a lot of charity auctions. Um, I prefer uh, free, um, with, when you do the charity auctions, I like it, but I don't know if it makes people pay more, which would be the uh, the concept of it. And plus, eBay Charity Works was very challenging for me to fix my accounting because they bill you after the fact. I wish they could just take the money off the top, but they don't do that. They bill it in a separate section. So keeping track of that charity donation has always been a little bit of a hassle for me, but I do think that gets people's attention. You get another ribbon, and people like to support 
So then hopefully that helps. Again, you will know what you're doing. You have a big store. I just think it doesn't look focused to me. There's not three specific things that your store sells. It's just a big collectible store, which usually big collectible stores only have a 4% sell through rate, but you have at least 20%, which means two things. Either you are an incredible picker or you have some type of auctions that are subsidizing that. Because normally, if you have a big store of collectibles, you only have a 4% sell-through rate, which is just, I wouldn't fight that. I would just have a really large store to compensate for that. All right, let's go to Shop Wake's Place. What's going on? You have... 688 items for sale and a sell-through rate of looks like 24% or higher. Again, it could be different depending on if you have some replenishables, but I'm showing 496 sold in the last 90 days. Very high sell-through rate. Um, I would guess if you're selling clothing that you're doing a lot of auctions because the clothing category is much slower, usually 5 to 10%, unless you're selling non-shirts. Shirts are very, very tough for me to the point where we were looking at this. The average number of searches on Terra Peak for shirts is about 10,000 per month versus like 20 million for Nintendo, right? So think about how different that traffic is. You can, And the 10,000 searches for shirts, there was like 30,000 shirts for sale. So it's like not a lot of demand and still quite a bit of supply. You know, so a lot of shirts being are being pushed down to, in my opinion, about 12 bucks, including shipping, is the average cost of a shirt on eBay. And that is not very good um, because, you, you know, if you take into consideration that it's probably costing you 10, 15 minutes of your time to make a listing, and that's conservative. I mean, you got to count the time going to get it, clean it, prep it, fold it, button all these buttons. Uh, I've moved so far away from men's clothing because it's just so hard to um, to scale if you have to do all that prep. So unless it's like ready to go, I try not to pick it up because time-wise, uh, selling these for twelve dollars is really painful because we're looking at you know three bucks for shipping, uh, a couple bucks for fees, and then your time. Unless you have somebody else doing it like me, it's really not worth it. Your product mix, in my opinion, is too heavily clothing. Uh, I would add more stuff that's returned less, like outerwear, uh, shoes, accessories, that type of stuff. So as you grow, try to get a little bit more of a diverse uh, mix. Jeans are great. Um, 670, I think you're losing money unless you stick these in a uh, flat rate cardboard envelope like myself. But I've actually uh, found a pretty good um, sell through rate with jeans as long as I have one or two day shipping you have expedited shipping great uh, you also have free returns which is awesome hmm I like this I wonder if you have any promotions running I don't see any So yeah, definitely. I would run four promotions like buy two, get 20% off, um, free shipping. If you buy five or more items, you need to run these different sales and combine that. Um, when, when you have more than one running, I think it really, really helps because it gives buyers an opportunity to stay in your store and keep looking for things that fit that metric. Um, since I started running four, my average uh, sale went from 1.1 items to 1.4 items, which is huge. You know, like of the last 600 transactions I've had in the last month or so, um, it's been 772 items. So I really, really, really want you to do the combined shipping order discount. That way people have to spend 50 to get free shipping, something like that to get people that really stay in your store. Um, photos. Um, I don't like this background. I think that you should have a plain background. That's super distracting for me. I would definitely go all the way square if you can. Um, I included the photo video right here in the uh, on the left side if you want to go to it and see how I take my photos. Um, but you can definitely eliminate this background um, with just a uh, painter's canvas and some good lights. You can take basically perfect photos um, that look super duper professional in the top like five percent of photographs with very little effort so making your photographs uh, pure white um, with more light less distraction is going to help overall um, shipping policies i would make sure i would charge 
Hmm, 670 is fine. I'm charging 649 flat across every single item just to make it easier, but again, you can adjust it. Um, let's see, let's go to your fixed price items real quick. Let's see, fixed price items look great. Um, you're charging shipping on some items. Here we go, 5964, that must be a um, calculated shipping. It seems like an odd number. Seems a little high too. I do not like this 5% strike through at all. Makes it look like your item's only 5% off, which is not true. They're probably 50, 60% off of what they're actually worth. Like these page jeans, 2364 free shipping, free returns. That's challenging, but it almost like it's 5% off when really page jeans are like a hundred bucks, right? I'd rather not use the strike through in my opinion. It just it looks corny to me because it's like, Here's a shirt that is really nice, but it's only 5% off. And 5% off, I don't get out of bed unless it's 50% off, right? And especially in this day and age with so many things competing for my time. Um, with your description, I would change it to bullet points. This is hard to read. Uh, I would do bullet points on the left side. I would do left justified. I would get rid of a bunch of this stuff and make it more crispy. This is super long. Like fast professional shipping is assumed. Uh, I would just put... Thank you for supporting small business. Done. I wouldn't put like negative reviews affect you negatively. You don't even have any negative reviews. So like, I don't think this is going to prevent people from leaving you a negative review. Just say, thank you for your business. Please reach out to us if you have any concerns, if you really want to go that route. But for me, I found usually a good experience with just saying thank you. Um, people can usually just tell that you're a small business. You know, so, you know the long paragraph, no one is going to read it. Um, for this, I really just want to know what the measurements are. And there's not even measurements in this, you know, so it's tough. That's not something that I would want to see. Um, but you do. I would use something a little bit more fancy than whatever this is to hold the tag down. I don't use anything fancy, but I think you should because it looks nicer if you use like a like a hmm, like a nice pen. I think would be uh, with a cap or something that looks a little fancy. I've been using um, a clothespin, which is super ghetto. So anyway, you're doing a great job. Um, you're going to need a little bit of a larger store. Please email me your exact goals with your store. But again, description needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Make people earn stuff with four, four promotions. And that's really going to help your store out. Let's get to Adam. Adam, what's going on? Nice store. Um... I covered a lot of the stuff in the previous reviews, but just to make it clear on your titles, they look fine to me. Um, I like the fact that you do not over describe your items. You have a very, very high sell through rate. 46% is very high. So what that means to me is that you're a very, very good picker and you have a small store. That's what usually when you have a very high sell through rate, um, it's from people who are very, very good at picking, but don't necessarily have a large store. So the items they pick sell super fast and are great. For you, what I recommend is to spend 100% of your time working on relationships. And this is a little bit off topic from a store review, but I can tell from your store that it's a bunch of random odds and ends. And it becomes difficult to really grow your store unless you can have categories that you're really good at and consistently getting supply. Uh, you know, if you were getting um, empty cassettes or empty, you know, empty electronic stuff from a supplier and you can just keep reordering it or from Goodwill's holding specific electronics for you. It's starting to really starting to, it could really boost your business because when I look through your store, there's no consistency. I don't see three um, categories that are going to make you a hundred bucks except for maybe random VHS players, but it's difficult to get a, um, a, a bigger order because people are only going to order one. Plus for me, they have a lot of returns. So it's like I almost need to make 10x to count the time it takes for me to pack a VCR versus a shirt is not even comparable. Like I don't even, all I'm doing is putting a label on a shirt and it's going out. It takes me three seconds to ship it, right? Versus a, a cassette, you need a little bit of a station to really get that going and it better be worth it for that. And plus you have the opportunity of it being returned. So make sure that you um, streamline your shipping station. I feel like that's gonna make a huge difference for you. You probably already have that since you're doing great with your feedback. Um, I would make people earn free shipping, but I get I get what you're doing. 
because you have very competitive items priced basically perfectly. Let's see. Yeah, again, your store is really small. It's kind of hard for me to get too much feedback. I don't want to lead you the wrong direction when your store is this small. I like this a lot. Um, ship. Again, I would go not this big and in my face. I would go like maybe 14 font. I would use left justified so I can read bullet points. What I would put is like item, uh, Yashica CS201, um, condition, great working condition with some cosmetic scratches. Three, please review all pictures uh, to ensure um, to ensure the, the most accuracy. Next one, we ship same day whenever we can. Thank you for buying from home business. Thank you. Uh, if you put anything related to negative feedback in here, I think this paragraph right here could be omitted completely. Just get rid of it. Just say, thank you for buying from me. Appreciate your time. You don't need to go into the negative feedback or whatever return process. I don't think people people read it or care. Uh, return fraud is going to be part of the part of the game that we play. So Adam, let me know um, if you need any more help because your store is super small, so I can't really give a ton of feedback on it. Flipping hangers, let's take a look here. Uh, 161 items. Uh, I really, really like your uh, lighting. You have very clean, clear photos. This to me looks like a store. It's the first one I reviewed um, that looks like a clothing store, although uh, Dan, your store is very professional, but it doesn't look like a store to me because the background is not crispy like this one. This is the flat gray. Uh, I also really, really like gray because it hides shadows. This is a fantastic hack right here. It looks like it's on purpose. Whether it is or not, this looks like a store. Very clean, concise photos. I uh, would go full square if you can, um, uh, just so you can give it the, the best experience on mobile because with the gray, especially, it's gonna make the left side and the right side of the photo white or above and below, that doesn't, that doesn't look that great. So I would change that if you can, go to square, but I understand you might be cropping out the background um, on this, so you may want a dedicated space. I recommend um, just a roll of butcher paper that goes behind uh, the item. Um, let's see, you have a 16% salty rate, which is pretty good. Um, your titles could be a little bit shorter. I've been experimenting um, with typing in my items into Google to see if they show up. Uh, and this right here is not going to rank very well in Google because there's so many words. If it just said Ann Taylor wool sweater, blue wool sweater, believe it or not, it might actually rank better. So I would try adjusting some short titles, some long titles, so you can try to see what kind of questions you're getting and whether or not it's worth it to go that route or not. Um, I would do 649 flat shipping across all items because it takes a lot of time to offer free 649 and 450 shipping depending on what the item is. For me, speed is king. Um, I have... Oh, I always have thousands of things for sale. So it makes up for not being the most accurate just because of, of sheer volume. It doesn't cost very much money when you're selling in the clothing category because the items are very, very cheap compared to like, let's say electronics or equipment or whatever. Clothing is relatively cheap. I recommend at least a 2,000 item store if you really want to make some money because there's always going to be returns no matter what. There's always going to be fraud. There's always going to be rentals. So I just think you need a larger store when you're running an eBay store. I get it with the space and et cetera, but you just got to level up because it's getting harder and harder to sell clothing on eBay. And I just recommend that you just either increase your profits and sell the same items or sell more items to get there. So 649 flat rate on all of them. You need to run some promotions. Um, saying like buy two get one 25 percent off free shipping if you buy five or more items add four of those promotions it's really going to help um, your description see this is very good clean crisp exactly what i need to know you could add one more line of personalization if you wanted to saying thank you for buying from flipping hangers we appreciate your business thanks for looking something like that and i definitely recommend that you cross post on different platforms hopefully you already are i think most of you know that my poshmark it's actually doing better than eBay in the clothing category, at least, um, just because of the algorithm does not require any promotions. I do not need to pay. I don't like paying eBay a lot in the promoted listings, and I feel like I am losing. So everyone that's wondering what your traffic is wonky, try playing with different things like adjusting the promoted listings amount, um, changing your shipping policies, doing different promotions, just really trying to get it to the point where 
um, you find your niche and you can start getting a predictable income. Once you have a predictable income and you kind of can guess how long things will take to sell, you're set to go. You have a business and not a hobby. If you don't know how long things are going to take to sell, it's not a real business. It's just really going to be the definition of insanity, doing stuff and expecting something and, and something different happens. So reach out to me again if you have any specific questions on what to improve, but your store is nice. Um, clean descriptions, clean titles, clear background. Um, the consistency is great with that flatness. I really like it. Okay, let's go to the only shop, 2013, what's going on? <clears throat> 33% sell through rate from what I can see. It's probably higher because you sell a lot of video games and you have multiples. Uh, I would not do capitalized case, so no capitalized whole game name, no capitalized new. Get rid of that because it doesn't search on Google as well. So capitalized case means the first letter is capitalized and that's it. Pricing is on point. Uh, I recommend a neutral background. This looks like some dude's house and I want you to look like a store. Uh, it's gonna help you get more money. It's gonna help sell through be better. It's gonna help you rank better on, on Google. Um, and I would go the full square photo if you can. Again, I had the picture video earlier in the description. It's bit.ly slash pure white photos. I made that video free now. Um, you guys are welcome um, to hit me up if you have any specific questions on photography, but I recommend a pure white background just to make it streamlined. It's all about speed. I like your product mix, um, selling a lot of cameras, a lot of equipment. Um, a lot of video games, a lot of things that sell super fast. So I love your store right here. This red background, love it. Wish it was like that on purpose, but you can see, looks like a shoe right here. Not a shoe, shirt. But if it was this pure red flat background, it would stand out so much more for electronics. I've seen a lot of people use blue or yellow or green to really stand out because it's so helpful knowing you actually have the item and it's not a stock photo. Uh, I would add a few more discounts. Again, I would maximize it, especially if you sell more than one video game. Uh, free shipping if you buy two or more. Um, $10 off a $50 order or more, etc. That kind of stuff. Really good. Um, with your negative feedback, I would definitely call eBay and see if you can get them removed. Make sure you message the buyer, um, let them know, hey, is there anything I can do to make your experience better? Talk to them a couple times, then call eBay. I bet you you can get at least half of these removed. So that being said, for everyone in this call, and especially for you, um, the only shop 2013, you need to rely on leverage. Leverage is key. You have to use other people's time, other people's money, other people's inventory. That's how you're going to really scale this for me. Each time I get some type of leverage, my income basically doubles, and I want that for you guys. When I figured out a lister, and now I don't list my own items, and I've consistently listed 250 items for four months now, my income has become stable in that area, and it's allowed me to build other types of things, like uh, build on a Poshmark process. Okay, great. How do I do that? Figure out how to get someone to list, me, list for me on Poshmark. Just added Mercari, and the person is cross-listing for me 100 items per week right now because I have a limit. Each time you do that, you get somebody else's time. You're never going to have more time, right? All you're going to, you know, as you, hopefully the longer you do this, the, you have a little bit more money so you can buy other people's time. But that's the whole point of this, guys. I want you guys to learn how to use leverage. Uh, reach out to me if you have any more specific questions. Um, but again, hopefully this was useful. Sorry for the delay. Uh, let me know if you need anything. And again, all of my products and services come with a full 100% refund, especially because this is tardy. So let me know if you need anything else. Have a great night, guys. Take care.